So, what can happen in the United States? If it starts with the F-150, it ends with the Mustang. And JD Swag, you make an excellent point. There is a there's a benefit and a detriment to everything. Direct injection is more efficient, but the problem is it creates more a more dirty, uh, let's just say, combustion event. When you have port injection, it runs down the back of the valve. So when you look and you, you take you take out an injector and look where it's injecting on a Coyote, it's almost like a direct injection. It's like right at a very favorable spot right behind the valve. So sprays and the, let's just say the effect, the, um, what's the solvent effect of the fuel running down the back of the valve cleans it. With direct injection, there is none of that. The valve does not get, let's just say, wet behind it. At no point, there is no uh, rundown effect through the valve, which is a kind of like solvent effect. And you don't get buildup. Like you don't get buildup on a valve on a port, port, directed, port dir injected engine. On a direct injected engine, you have a byproduct of like soot and buildup on the valve because nothing is running down that valve into the combustion event. But you do get a, let's just say, more efficient burn because of the direct injection. Whereas the port, you get, let's just say, less soot. So there's a byproduct to everything. Direct injected vehicles, you know, older direct injected vehicles just have an issue with just gunk on the valves. That's like a thing. So you would think that modern direct injected vehicles generally are better in terms of efficiency, but then you find out that they create more soot or particulate matter in the combustion event. So then people started, you know, tripping balls about that shit. Like, wait a minute, we went direct injection for more efficiency and now we're causing more soot. Port injection isn't as efficient, but it causes less soot. That's why Mustangs have both. They have direct and port. And you can blend when the direct comes into play and when the port comes into play. And in my opinion, in Mustangs, because we are all worried about performance, the direct injection is not beneficial. I know Chevy guys are going to lose their shit because their LT engines are designed with direct injection in play. Coyote engines are not designed specifically for direct injection to be at play. It's more of supplement and in, let's say, an emissions thing. So at startup, you get a lot of DI coming into play, and but at power, you have PI coming into play, more like a 70 to 30% blend, and you can adjust that in the tuning. So what people have found, oh, direct injection causes more soot because they thought it was more efficient. Okay, well, let's just throw a particulate filter in there and just like he talks about the issue with the particulate filter is the system the region the sensors the software and a lot of the hardware to make it work and finally finally it's less efficient imagine you have a efficient burning efficient in terms of fuel economy d uh, direct injected engine like the 2.0 liter Le ecoboost that these mavericks have and then because and then you're going to take away efficiency because you got to clean up the soot caused by the DI, uh, the combustion event that the DI causes. It just causes more particulate matter according to everything, and they're putting it in those. So you're going to see 2.0 EcoBoost with diesel particulate filters, 3.5 liter EcoBoost have been rumored to have been tested already. F-150s to have a diesel, per, uh, sorry, uh, um, gasoline. If I say diesel, I apologize. It's just kind of like programmed in my brain gasoline particulate filter and everything that starts with f-150 bleeds down to the mustang it's just kind of how it is now maybe because the mustang is such a um, specialty vehicle they're not really going to go hardcore on it and maybe it will not have a gasoline particulate filter but based on everything i see in the uk ford already has it in place so all ford literally has to do is have that system come into the u.s flip a switch or two in the calibration, and there you have a gasoline particulate filter. That is the end of tuning, in my opinion. It is the absolute the end of tuning as we know it because if in the event a shop, and a shop will do this, and a shop should do this, you get a Maverick in, you remove the gasoline particulate filter, don't tell anybody, put a pipe in its place, see if it runs. If it doesn't run, 
and it is limiting throttle, spark, RPMs, usually limits throttle. How many of you have done an 18 manifold uh, upgrade on a F-150 truck? Tw uh, 2018 to 2020, you put in a boss manifold or an 18 manifold? One of the more common things that happens is when you remove the stock intake manifold, there are two, that's right, two on Gen 3 Mustangs and F-150s fuel rail pressure sensors, the port and the high pressure. So there's a port and the DI fuel rail pressure sensors. A lot of people have to, you know, oh shit, there's something at the bottom because you disconnect the one you see. The, the real visible one is port. There it is. But you forget there's one way at the bottom and that usually happens when you're tugging on the intake manifold and you're like, oh, there's one extra one at the bottom. You don't even think about it. So when you reassemble it, you only put in the port fuel rail pressure sensor, right? You only put one in. Oh, everything else is good. It drives fine. It doesn't throw a code. And then you go wide open throttle and it goes, what? Then the throttle shuts and you go, wait a minute, what's happening? Then you get a fuel rail pressure code. So there, right there, Ford has instituted logic that if a sensor is not sensing, it will limit throttle. So it is already baked into the tuning. That's the first time I've seen that. There are also oil pressure sensor units where on a, on a Coyote swap or even a modern Gen 3 Coyote, if it is not seeing oil pressure, it will limit throttle also. So Danny Bill, I am using you as an example because it happened to me and it happened to you today, and it, you reminded me of an issue. So Ford has already instituted fail-safes in the programming that if a sensor is not sensing, it can limit throttle. So now we're going to look at a gasoline particulate filter in a Maverick, an F-150, or a UK Mustang. You disconnect it. You don't think that's going to limit throttle? Okay, now if you get around that, you are literally going to get a knock on the door because you... Right now, a Mustang, you can remove the catalytic converters as been proven by many people that take the 24 Mustang, put headers on it and all this stuff, take the cats off, and the car runs fine. So, for whatever reason, Ford did not limit anything when you remove emissions components. They say, nope, we're good. We're going to make it run. It's all good. So, so far, so good. They're allowing modifications to happen so the car still gets sold. NA, two, NA guys can still put headers on, mix some race gas, uh, lightweight stuff. The car is going to get it. But you're going to know, you're going to know really quickly if you remove the gasoline particulate filter in the Maverick, if they've instituted fails.